I think as we present um, these, pr these presentations will get shorter and shorter because uh, there, there's probably quite a bit of overlap. Um, interestingly, in, in our group, we, I have a favorite uh, for each of the questions, but I'll, I'll put that one at the end uh, um, because we have some very creative folks out there. In terms of the coastal zone, um, the, one, one, of the, one of the very intriguing comments right off the bat um, was, you know, if we're, a change, we're, if we're about changing behaviors, I'm not interested in what I think, but what other think, what other people think of the coastal zone. And it's kind of, I think, this outcome-based approach to dealing and defining the coastal zone and, and those kinds of things. Now, of course, we have the scientific and engineering types that, that we're focusing in on more of the traditional things uh, in terms of the coastal zones, uh, in terms of maybe defining it by either defined flood zones, um, uh, defining it um, by geographic, geomorphologic features, um, sediment, uh, sedimentation type features, mean high tide. Um, you know, we have we had some folks talking about we've got to keep it simple, uh, recognizing that, um, that that human dimensions. Um, but then we also uh, I challenged the group to make sure that we talked both about resource and societal dimensions of of these kinds of things. And um, uh, one of the things that was brought up is that the coastal zone is a gateway to the nation's economy. And so there's the, uh, there's the uh, economics aspects that came up several times in, in, um, in, different, uh, in different ways. The, um, let's see here. One very interesting comment is taxpayers. We are all investors in coastal zone issues. Uh, so I thought that was pretty good. And the, the fact that we have the furthest inland areas um, those areas can affect the coastal processes and so that we can't uh, ignore those. The, let's see, what else? We have, um, there, there were some discussions in terms of, you know, how we even define a coastal zone and that perhaps um, we need to make sure that we have a good understanding uh, of, of the definition that somebody's using to talk about it. You know, whether you're using um, a community that's in a coastal county, a coastal county itself, census block information, those kinds of things. Um, but depending on who you talk to, that definition uh, can be different. And, um, and then my favorite was uh, somebody said, it used to be my retirement destination. Uh, so I think in recognition of maybe what Sandy had done. So in terms, of the, in terms of the hazards and threats, um, again, I think we had kind of a provocative question at, at the beginning, you know, hazard and threats to what, what positive benefits do we care about? So again, it's kind of taking, depending on your audience, you're adjusting the argument or the discussion to that audience to uh, try to affect an outcome. Uh, but again, you know, and I come from more of a mitigation planning background, so you know, you hear the typical things, the tropical storms, the tsunamis, um, those kinds of things. One, I, I thought one really good one uh, that somebody brought up was earthquakes. Uh, and that gets to the interdependency issue and the multiple threat scenario that, um, uh, you know, you look at an earthquake, overlay it on a coastal zone, and, and even if you have timing, different timing, what does that, how does that impact the built environment? Um, the uh, sea level rise, loss of habitat, um, uh, wind hazard uh, came up uh, several times as well. Uh, and then again, we, we kind of went into the, um, into the human dimension and we had a lot of discussion on this and, and there may have been some overlap between hazards and threats and risk later on, um, but some of the hazards and threats were uh, the human cause, lack of having correct policies in place, lack of funding, lack of resilience, lack of planning, ignorance, um, all of those being hazards and threats uh, to, to what we're doing. Um, things such as interrupt, interrupting uh, natural processes. So, th so for example, um, had one example talking about filling and filling in a coastal zone. And, and uh, I, I, I kind of asked the question, well, that seems so, sort of counterintuitive, but it goes to the concept of adversely impacting either adjacent property owners or adversely impacting the natural process itself. Um, the confusion of communicating these things uh, in terms of hazards and threats, trying to keep all the words straight um, and, and trying not to, trying to sell confusing concepts to the public uh, in more of a simple way. The, um, 
Uh, one of the more interesting ones, um, a couple pollution, uh, again, was kind of the human dimension. Uh, drought as a natural thing uh, and being, again, a ha hazard that we might, might not think about in the coastal areas. And uh, let's see here. There was, um, again, multiple ones on the, on the ignorance uh, theme. I think there was a lot of, lot of folks that were uh, talking about or thinking about it that way. And I think my favorite one there was the meteorites, impact waves from meteors. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a creative and unique one. So in terms of risks, uh, you know, the, one other thing was kind of that, that uh, null hypothesis. What's the risk of doing nothing? And uh, what what does that mean? Um, but again, the you know whether we have pollution, degradation of ecosystems uh, from the natural side, or we have politics, greed, and ignorance uh, on the uh, societal side, um, we had we had um, kind of a downcast uh, um, uh, group. We had lots of collapse and devastation preceding uh, something. Uh, so collapse the NFIP uh, was was a risk, and and in, in its seriousness, you know, in terms of what that means to to uh, coastal areas, uh, collapse of the coastal ecosystems that we have, and and what those mean, um, apathy uh, is is a risk. The um, w one of the risks. Uh, this was this was also very interesting. Is um, uh, when when we're looking at the those that wish to develop and the development community and the risk of of kind of categorizing developers is always on the bad side of things uh, and and instead um, you know working with developers and and uh, providing the good information providing good fair sensible policies and things and, and working with them to come up with a with a common solution that everybody's bought into um, the uh, again we kind of had this um, risk depends also uh, to whom and what um, we do planning based on what has happened before um, I, there's a risk um, and this goes to I think uh, Margaret Davison's very succinct way of putting it um, unwillingness to adapt to changing times and uh, you don't adapt you become extinct so um, uh, we got onto this also this data uh, discussion which was which was kind of interesting the fact that we're creating data at a at a more rapid pace as we've ever done in history uh, exponentially and um, but the risk is that we can be overwhelmed by the data that we don't have mechanisms to organize or help make decisions and that uh, with the data we could easily without those those systems that we could make bad decisions um, there was a uh, there was also a risk kind of that uh, that binary aspect of in or out of, of a of a coastal zone or a flood zone those kinds of things um, the risk of uncertainty due to data uh, so you know the data uncertainty that we have uh, has a risk however we also had a counterpoint to that and that is when folks do have certainty of data um, certainty can be a risk and can actually drive very bad decisions and so the I think the example was um, with uh, uh, Con Ed in, in Sandy and the cost of upgrading electrical infrastructure to make it resilient and their cost models they know exactly how much it's going to cost to 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 upgrade and based on that certainty they actually make decisions that are risky decisions uh, and it's and it's investment based, based approach uh, there's a risk of poor communication um, and, uh, and, and also uh, risk related to psychological trauma. And, you know, the, the, we talk again kind of about this issue of probability and, and how you equate that. I think um, uh, Bill from New York was saying, you know, we've had four separate 500-year flood events in two years. And so how do we, how do we deal with that? Uh, and then my favorite in terms of risk was that uh, um, zombies are not a risk unless they bite you. So I'll close with that. Thank you.